Welcome to this week's Ask GMBN, and we have got a superstar helping us out this week. It's Chris Smith, usually over on EMBN, yep. uh, but today you're, you're helping, helping us out. out. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, Mike. Wicked, you? wicked. Yeah, we've got some great questions. I'm going right. to dive straight into it because you guys have got some big things to ask. Um, actually, you know what? First off, last week we talked about lock-ons. Right. And how they changed our lives, Chris. Do you remember oh. before the lock-on? I do remember oh. before, the, <clears throat> before the lock-on. I remember getting my wife's, uh, my mum's hairspray at the time, actually. <laughs> hairspray and my grips on. That's what I used oh. to use for sticking my grips on. And that worked, did it? Yeah, hairspray. Oh, sick. I've Slide on, that. super easy, and then just let it dry out. See, it was so hard. Before lock-on grips existed, mm. this was our problems. But um, Isno, Ter Isno Terrace says, um, we, all, we all ran bar ends back in the day, so the grips couldn't come yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Do you so actually, that was one solution back in the day. So no, not losing your grip before lock-ons existed, um, you could put your bar ends on so your bike looked literally like some kind of strange cattle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never um, been a big fan of the barons. No, I wasn't. Um, but I tell you what, that didn't stop him spinning. No, didn't definitely. stop him spinning. Lock-ons changed the world. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, let's get into the questions proper this week. First one is from Alex Savas, and he says, can you turn a hardtail into a jump bike, Chris? Of course you can. Pretty much all I would be doing if I wanted to change it more to, into a jump style bike, which would probably be losing the rear derailleur, trying to make it single speed. It just gets it a little bit more robust if you're crashing. So it's gonna stop uh, all that noise as well from slapping rear derailleur, yeah, yeah. chain coming off. Maybe if you've got adjustable forks, make them a little bit stiffer. Um, and look at what tires you got as well. Maybe like a bit more of a slick style tire, you know, you know, better out on the trails, skate parks, yeah. things like that. But definitely um, easy things. We'd like to slam your seat out of the way, decent set of riser bars. That's pretty much it. You're pretty much there. I mean, if you've got a big frame mm. um, hardtail, mm. then it's a little bit harder. The smaller the yeah. frame, the better. Definitely. If you look at a dirt jump bike mm -hmm. now, they're tiny, aren't they? Tiny. They're literally like the trials bikes from 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can do it. Can do it. Um, Eric, you are a good man to ask that question. Because <laughs> you can dirt jump. I can do it. Boy, jump. can you dirt jump. <laughs> Aaron Kona says, I have a Bosna Evo with 130mm front um, and back. Could I upgrade to 150 mil without messing up the geometry of the frame? Now, any of you guys out there who don't know, a Bosna Evo is a UK brand, um, you know, not mega money, pretty mm. affordable, yeah. uh, good bike. But that's a good sort of uh, full size bike, that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 I think if you're going to stick a 150 mil, if you're talking about the fork on the front, obviously, you're going to slacken the head angle out a bit. So it's going to be a bit better if you're riding more downhill style trails. Um, it's also going to raise the bottom bracket up as well, so it won't be quite as good as cornering, but it's only 20 mil at the end of the day. But yeah. It's not going to make massive differences, but yeah, definitely. You'll get it. away with it. You'll get yeah. away. Um, and I have said this before on Ask, actually. I once put a triple clamp fork on my trials frame, a trials frame <laughs> like this one. So yes, oh, just God. busting the shed behind me. Oh, like this one, like that low, and it had a triple clamp fork on really? the front. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. Um, and I, yeah, because there was a particular drop I wanted to try. Really? You and I just thought, I just thought, <laughs> it's so, it was so far into a downslope. Right. And on a trials bike into a downslope with a rigid fork, yeah, um, they just snap off. Yeah. Ask Danny Mac. <laughs> There's a that. great video of that happening to Danny <laughs> Mac, actually, um, where his front of his bike I just snaps that. off. It's incredible. Right, moving on. Yes, you can do it, Aaron, is the answer. Jeremy and Tara Thompson ask, um, I'm not sure if it's Jeremy or Tara asking, Right. We'll go with both of them. Um, any tips on choosing a saddle? There seems to be too many options to me. How do I figure out what kind of saddle works best um, without dropping a boatload of cash on a bunch of different saddles? Good question. Um, I tell you what, I've got a bit of advice because um, it is quite hard actually to um, try a saddle out in a store. Yep. And actually, like if you're just sitting on a bike, mm -hmm doesn't really tell you whether the saddle's working. You do Definitely need not. to ride it. Yeah. What I do is ride some of your mates' bikes. Yeah. Because you'll all probably find you've all got different saddles because mm -hmm. there's so many out there. Yeah. Um, so one way to do it is try riding some of your mates' bikes. Mm -hmm. um, or if you go to like a trail center and you see a seat you're thinking about, maybe ask someone, can I just have a quick go around the car park mm -hmm. on your bike? Um, yeah. That might sound like you're stealing it though. Definitely. <laughs> but you know what I mean, most people are pretty, uh, aren't so cynical and they probably yeah. would let you do it. Um, any any ideas, Chris? Yeah, I think some of the higher end um, saddle manufacturers actually offer demo saddles, so you can actually get a saddle, try it in different widths and sizes, and actually Brilliant. ride that for a few days, and then commit to buying the saddle. And I think um, like Physique and people like that are actually um, have a saddle measurement guide, so they're like a big gel pack that you can sit on. Yeah. Then they've got their shop staff are trained to show like where you're 
your sort yeah. of pelvis bones sit and your bum sort of sits on the saddle and they advise what saddle is good for you. But yeah, it's a really important thing. Yeah. Probably quite overlooked, you know, most yeah. people overlook it. It makes a huge so. difference. Mm. If you're uncomfortable on the bike, oh, it's, it's, be fun. It's, it's never gonna be fun, never, never. Um, and right, and to help us understand how uh, important it is to set up your saddle right, let's take a look at this video actually where Blake rode with an incredibly high saddle <laughs> and got himself in some trouble. Look how sexy my bike looks with a high seat post. Look at it. Look at it. It's like built for a mission. It's like going to conquer this mountain. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. It's fun, isn't it? When your saddle's right up oh, high, yeah. it makes riding so hard. Dropper hard. post saves our lives, right? <gasps> oh, crazy, doesn't it? Dropper post is the upgrade, isn't it? Definitely. It is yeah. the upgrade. Yeah, everyone agrees. Right, next question. Paul Byrne is saying, lads, I'm learning a manual and wheelie, uh, but I seem to only be able to start a wheelie by going slow and sitting down, um, i.e. not on a trail, normally as he needs a bit of purchase in the gearing, mm -hmm. and he can only manual when he's going faster with a dropper post down. Is this normal? <laughs> is his question. Is this normal, Chris? I don't know, I can't really manual. <laughs> can't you? <laughs> no, I think um, manual. Who knew Chris can manual? Because <laughs> he showed us a lot <laughs> but I think that there's a big difference between like a pedal kind of um, wheelie style and the manu manual you're mentioning I think it's really important to probably go from the pedaling wheelie and then switch to a thing called a coaster wheelie which is a sat down like uh, coast uh, coasting along basically so you're not pedaling anymore you're right on the balance point and learning that back brake modulation then I think that's when you take the next step to the manual because the manual is basically a stood up coaster wheelie where mm -hmm. you weight right back um, but yeah, just take it in those sort of steps. Um, big mistakes a lot of people do for wheeling is choosing too easy a gear for the pedaling wheelie, so you end up spinning out of um, drive. It's all about weight position and modulating the back brake and getting further back than what you think. If you're not looping out on your bike, falling off the back, then you're not going you know, further enough back. You really need to go back further than you actually think. Yeah, yeah. And is there is there more fun trick than the wheelie? I don't think there is. Definitely is. I think that's one of my, yeah. I think that's one of my favorite It's a go-to, isn't it? It's a go-to. And, now, and yeah. a manual, when you've got a manual yeah. nailed, it's and, the best. And it's what you can link it into, you know, if you do like yeah. a hop up on a ledge and a manual, then you do a trick out of it. It's just yeah. endless, you know? I think yeah. Yeah. manual control is the sign of like, proper bike control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll notice on the trail, when you've got that manual working, and mm. it's not unusual to uh, find it more comfortable at speed, mm. so you're not wrong. Um, it, it's so useful on the trail. You yeah. link up so many bits mm. of the trail just being able to have a bit of confidence in holding that front wheel yeah. high across some rollers or mm. into a berm or yeah. out of a berm to something else. If you watch any of those good riders, they're floating that front end all the time and yeah. that is essentially a manual. Yeah, yeah so uh, good, good, tr good trick to have. Uh, Wab is saying, hey guys, I really need your help. Right, um, so uh, I was at practice, broke the thumb lever on a specialized post um, all I need is the part you push with your thumb, um, not the entire thing. I tried looking up the part, but all I can find is the entire mechanism, which costs 70 bucks. Whoa. Wow. Um, I have a race next weekend, uh, need to get it fixed soon. So can you find a way of fixing just a small bit of that bike? I think I've got a good suggestion. Go I, on, I, I didn't, think, know yeah. right. didn't know about this. Didn't know about this. Go on eBay, mm -hmm. right? Because what, you know, you've got to use, you've got to think um, out the box on this, right? Because you're unlikely to be able to find that piece. Right. But you probably will find for less than 70 bucks, a bike with that piece right. that you can buy and just take the piece off that and you've got extra parts. A whole bike. Because this it's crazy. People do like garage sales mm. and they get rid of stuff and they don't realize if they're not in the sport what they're selling. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And um, I, I know Steve Jones was telling me recently about someone who bought a full spec um, specialized Levo for crazy money because really? there was a tiny fault on it and the guy on eBay yeah. thought, well, it's busted. Yeah, yeah. And that guy bought it for like, I think a thousand pounds or something mm. and got like this incredible bike. eBay's your place. You've got to go on there, look at what bikes are on sale for really good money, but look at the parts on there. You never mm. know, you might find that part yeah. that you need. There's some people who are wizards on eBay. Oh, they Facebook, just... uh, Facebook Marketplace as well. I find myself constantly going on there. And oh, I'm yeah? like, yeah, loads of cool stuff on there, especially oh, like the I'm retro not, stuff. I'm like, not up on that. You're not, yeah, no, supposed to be looking. I don't go on Facebook. Just be careful, it's quite a market for stolen stuff as well, so just be careful what you're buying out there. Ah, definitely some bargains to be had, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, good point. Okay, next question is from Logan, who rides? 
that's his name. Um, how old does a bike have to be to be retro? <laughs> Brilliant question. <laughs> Nearly impossible to answer. It's got to be. Um, yeah. God, what would you say is... I'd say mid, mid, early 90s, I reckon. Early... What, to be retro? Yeah. Oh, come off it. No, it's much later than that now. Yeah. I think if you go into 2005 backwards, 2005 it's backwards. retro. Really? Yeah. Nah. Oh. That's mid school. That's just mid school. Old. Mid school, that is. <laughs> mid Retros. school. Yeah. All right, so what are we saying? We're saying like. 90s like 90s. 90s. Yeah. So it's in the 90s, it's retro. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. that is now official in mountain biking. <laughs> you heard it here first. If it isn't in the 90s or backwards, it ain't retro. And if someone says it is, well, they'll so have Chris to deal with because he's not happy about that. Um, right, I tell you what was um, got me thinking about that retro bike is the old cheap bike challenge, which I absolutely fun. love. So let's take a look at a few clips from that. Right, today it's the cheap bike challenge. We've all been given £100 each to go away and buy a cheap mountain bike. And today we're going to put them to the test. Oh my God, Elliot, it's three! Go on, Doddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, who grip he's got. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, they look pretty crazy. Imagine trying to ride those bikes nowadays. I've watched that video so many times because the, the bit where Doddy and Blake do that downhill mm -hmm. and then Neil goes down on that just and absolute no shed of a bike. Steel rims. And he still looks fast. Yeah, he's, he's gonna look fast. He's, he's, un super fast. he's unreal, man. Like, go on. If you go riding with Neil Neil Donahue on, on like proper trails mm -hmm. and try and keep up with him, it's, it's He's crazy. borrowed my Kinevo recently just for a little run through the woods and yeah. he's just gone. Yeah, and now it's so not happy fast. with you, is it? Every time you get on it, it's like, eh, not could, quite be better. Well, could be better, could be better. Right, Pseudo Sapien says, uh, love the whole show, thank you. Keep up the good work. I would like to know if you guys include stretching, yoga or physio in your training programs. Chris, do you do yoga? I don't do yoga, but loads of people I know, especially from like the big sort of free ridey jump side of it that I used to come from. Um, I know Timo Pretzel was really into it and he really yeah. recommended it. I think uh, yeah. it's definitely something you look don't really think about when you're a younger rider, but when you get like mid or twenties onwards, it's something that you definitely need to be doing, like stretching. Yeah. I think a lot of the younger guys are a lot more into it than like we used to be. But yeah. I would literally ride for two or three hours at a skate park or something, then I'd jump in my car and mm. drive two or three hours home, get out of it, and not be like you know literally <laughs> trying to lift my legs up, wake up in the morning like I broke my back or something. So stiff. But I think yeah. definitely now when I come back from like a cross country or trail ride, I do do a bit of stretching. Yeah. I think if you don't, it's definitely going to be something you're going to struggle with later on in life. And things like just posture and like rounded mm. off shoulders and things mm. like that, you really mm. need to be thinking about doing mm. that. Because you've always struggled, struggled with your back a bit. Haven't you? Yeah, well, I yeah. broke my back, you know, mm. quite a few years back. And never helps. Yeah, and just general riding, smashing into stuff, picking yourself mm. up off the floor, and all those impacts is, is it mm. does take a big toll on your body. It's something you really do need to think about. Mm, I feel your pain, man. Well, I don't. But <laughs> you get my meaning. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I actually do do a bit of yoga. You do? Yoga is something I do do, yeah. Well, I mean, my version of, yeah. Mm. You know, my downward facing dog's not what it was, but I can <laughs> I can stretch around quite well. Um, I so, yeah, I, I always used to do yoga. So yoga's hard. Mm. It's I really see. hard, really hard. But I, um, I uh, do do a little bit now, and mm. I find it, it really... It's real good for your mind, isn't it, as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so it's just More a nice, like nice bit of time in it to yourself. Yeah, so in, in, including that in your training or in your post-ride, mm. good idea, definitely. Um, Mason Howe says, should I use plus side tires for XC for more traction or thinner tires for less weight? Love the channel, by the way. Um, I, well, plus size for cross country, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. It depends what you're riding as well. Yeah. I think if you're on a hard tail, then maybe you get a bit more shock mm. absorption from that tire. But yeah. traditionally on a cross country bike, I've always gone for a skinnier, lightweight, uh, tire mm. least rolling resistance possible probably less grip than a plus tire but yeah. i think for cross country you know you're going to be trying to save that rolling resistance to so going for a cross country based tire over yeah. a plus tire is definitely going to be yeah, the way i would be going definitely going to save on weight on a smaller mm. tire but obviously the the, the tread pattern mm. and the tire technology is what's key and mm. a, a cross country tire will be the performance of it will be so much greater compared yeah. to a big, oh yeah, I don't know, plus to, I rode a plus tire when I first came back riding after my accident, um, and 
I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I just didn't mm. like that rolly wash kind yeah. of feel in the corners. Yeah. And, yeah, That's yeah, what we ride a lot of on like EMBM. We ride a lot of the plus size tyres, but I think when I get back on a standard bike, mm. I definitely wouldn't be riding a plus tyre without that E, e assistance yeah. that we get yeah. on those e-bikes. Yeah. Right, Tom Kearney is asking, what is a good Enduro MTB that I can race a bit of downhill on as well as? Um, well, you know what, any Enduro bike really Super can handle cool. most downhill these yeah. days. I mean, I think, I don't know what you think about this, Chris, but I think there's less and less argument for getting a downhill bike. Yeah, I think totally. Um, I used to ride for a few different companies and I always used to have like a downhill bike, a jump bike, so on and so forth. And I think towards the end, like when the bikes started progressing a hell of a lot, like the trail bikes, the bigger travel trail bikes started coming in. I actually found my downhill bike. I used it once or twice in the season. <laughs> I used it for an urban race out in Mexico once and it literally stayed in the bike bag the rest of the season. Yeah. And I just rode a 160 mil tra tra trail bike because it's yeah. so capable, especially yeah. over here. We haven't got those massive downhill stuff like you have, you know, yeah. in Europe where you've got lift assist and all that stuff. But I just found the downhill bike just totally numbed my riding. You know, I yeah. just wanted to be out on the trail bike. Deadened it out, yeah. Mm. I mean, you've got to be going pretty fast these days to justify it. Yeah, um, I mean, they are incredible. They're incredible yeah. things to yeah. ride. Um, and they're, they're a very different experience mm. when you get on them compared. If you ride XC and you got on a downhill bike, it's, it's, a, it's a, bike. a very different beast. <laughs> very different beast. Um, I tell you what, Blake did a great video. It's one of our most popular on GMBN. Trail bike versus a downhill bike challenge. Just take a look at that because it's hilarious. Hi, my name's Blake, and I'm all about the Nuke Proof Mega Trail Bike. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Blake, and this is my Canyon Sender Downhill Bike. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the official theme tune to that. I like that, Mark. Yeah, good. that's the little Sting, uh, what do you call that? Audio, sting. audio logo. Audio logo for that. Yeah, that's official too. Uh, right, correct me if I'm wrong this week is from Bradley riding his DMR sect at Buckland Rings. Buckland Rings, been there Buckland a few times. Rings, and I've right. led down in the sand a hell of a lot. Okay, so here he goes. Hit, the, hitting this jump for the first time, big gap. Um, you'd like to know how he can improve or if he needs to get more air because he's sort of having to tuck the bars um, into his chest, for into his lap for no reason. So here he goes. What do you think of this, Chris? Um, Check it out. Here he comes. Go on, dude. Here, it's a big, big jump. jump. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, nice. Pretty good. What do you think? Well, do you know what I think? The first thing I think, right, you're, you're having to sort of like, as you're going up, this is your bike, this pen, this is your bike. You're going up and then you're creating that height with the front end because you're like, Ugh! and you're getting over, right? But you're virtually at the point of doing a tuck no under. Looks like it. I would, I'd take the hands off and put them back on. You're nearly there. Because that jump's working for you, Definitely. right? You're getting over it. It's like, yeah, you want to do it with more style, but you're really close to a really cool trick. And a tuck no under is one of the first sort of like tricks you can really start. Yeah boosting yeah, it out there, isn't it? So I would go for a tuck no under, but Chris has probably got better, better uh, <laughs> advice. advice. Yeah. Yeah. I think basically it looks like you're coming out of the takeoff and there's quite a steep takeoff there, those jumps, I know those jumps, and the bike is obviously traveling up, or you sort of need to break down your jumping into kind of three parts. You've got the takeoff, and then that mid sort of air, and then you're obviously coming into the landing, but it looks as though you've done stage one where you're taking off, but the stage two is where you need to shift your weight slightly forward, give a little push on the, on the handlebars to level the bike off, then nose it into the landing. But basically you're hitting the jump, staying in the same kind of body position as the, the takeoff sort of projecting you out at, and you're kind of staying like that and then coming in, whereas you need to go up, weight shift, little shove on the bars, get the bike level, and that's when you got that time to do that trick if you're going to desire. Mm. Then look at nosing it into the landing. So yeah, just a little weight shift and a little tiny push on the bars as you go out the takeoff. Rather than going up, you want to go up and forwards. Mm. Uh, but personally, I think the jump gods, the jump gods are telling you tuck no hand. I reckon that's what I think. <laughs> so I think you should go for it. Go for it, Bradley. If you do do a tuck no hander, please send us the video. We'll that would that. be absolutely amazing. Yeah, props on hitting that. It was a big jump. Yeah, big hit, big hit. Right, thank you for sending in that. Um, and if you would like to do a correct me if I'm wrong, you can go to our GMBN uploader. Go to the correct me if I'm wrong. 
uh, tab and upload a video and we would love to uh, give you some advice on that. Got any questions for Ask JMBN? Then stick them in the comment section down below or you can email them to us or use the hashtag Ask JMBN. We will see you next week. If you'd like to stay with us then make sure you click over there on that video where you can see the new uh, SRAM AXS component tree which Neil had a little bit of a play with which was rad. Um, what's this big button for here, uh, dude? Hey. Click that one if you want to subscribe to Classic. GMBN. Classic. Yeah, make sure you don't miss out on any video content that we do here on GMBN. Yeah, absolutely. And give us a thumbs up, like, and we'll see you next time.